fellas. Today we're going to be talking about one thing that I like about every UFC champion, or one my favourite thing about every current UFC champion. Now, I will do a part two to this, stating one thing I dislike, but I decided to do this because I feel like right now, the champions that we have in the UFC are probably some of the most interesting we've had in a while. We've got a complete different mix-up of champions, so I thought I'd take one thing from each champion that I like, um, why I like it, uh, and yeah, and I will say early, just quickly, for light heavyweight, I have gone with Jamal Hill. I know he's not fighting for the belt, and I know he's not the champion, but he is the most recent champion, so I didn't want to miss out the division. So I've just included Jamal Hill for the sake of it. But yeah, first division heavyweight champ is John Jones, and I like his dominance. The fact that Jones is so dominant, I mean, he's been dominant his entire career. There's a lot of controversial things about him, obviously, the roids, the... You know, other stuff he's been doing outside of the octagon, but his dominance is one thing you've got to give him credit for. He's dominated three different generations of champions. Obviously, when he started in the UFC, he was beating people like, um, what's it, Rampage Jackson, Shogun Rua. Then he went on to fight people like Thiago Santos, OSP, Alexander Gustafsson, Dominic Reyes. And now he's gone on out there in a different division, won the belt in a different division against Cyril Garn and dominated him. He's meant to be fighting Stipe, but he had to pull out due to an injury, and I think that's going to be rescheduled next year. Say what you want about Jones, but you, you've got to give him credit. He is dominant. One of probably the most dominant fighter we've ever had in the UFC. Undefeated as well. Never lost a fight. He doesn't get more dominant than that, to be honest. John Jones, yeah, that's what I like about him. Most people think he's the greatest as well. I Personally, I think he's the greatest of all time. I've already made a video while there's no definite goat, but... Personally, in my opinion, Jones is the greatest. I know a lot of you watching will agree that Jones is the greatest. And yeah, John Jones, the thing that likes me about him is his absolute dominance. You can't really ever bet against Jones when he's in the octagon. No matter who he's against, it kind of feels criminal to bet against him. Like, even if he was going against one of these newcomers like Pavlovich or Aspinall, I'd still, I, I still wouldn't want to bet against him because it's John Jones. You know what I mean? He's got that aura that you don't ever want to bet against him. So I'm going. The one thing I like about Jones is definitely his dominance. He's he's a dominant champion. He 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 always has been a dominant champion. Besides maybe one or two fights, but yeah, that's what I like about Jones. Light heavyweight, like I said, I know Jamal Hill's not the champ, but I'm just going to include him. My mic's bugging out. Uh, I'm going to include Jamal Hill because. He was the most recent champ we've had at light heavyweight. What I liked about Jamal Hill was he, he was just the coolest champ in and out the octagon. His YouTube channel, the podcast he's got going, the fact that he's got good chemistry with a lot of fighters, and he's just not boring. I feel like the light heavyweight division, for the past couple of years, ever since John's left, it's kind of been stale of personality. We've had Yuri Prohaska as champion, and don't get me wrong, I like Yuri Prohaska as personality, but he doesn't really do anything on the mic. Glover Teixeira, again... Nice guy and stuff. He's, a, he's quite funny as well, but he doesn't do anything on the mic. Yambla Horwich, same thing. Who else have we had? Like Jamal Hill, I feel like it's a breath of, breath of fresh air. He's just cool in and out the octagon. It's nice hearing him talk. He's What I, what I mean by that is, you know, when he's... I don't know, he just he, he gives off cool vibes. It sounds kind of cringe, cool vibes. But you, you get what I'm trying to say. He's got a really chill personality. And the thing is, not even just his personality. His fight style is entertaining as well. We haven't really had, you know... Well, like we've had some exciting fighters in light heavyweight, obviously, Yuri Prohaska and Alex Pereira are literally fighting for the belt, but Jamal Hill, he's got such an exciting and dangerous style, the the war that he had with Glover Teixeira, the knockout he got against Johnny Walker, it's a shame he lost to Paul Craig, but either way, Jamal Hill for me, it's got to be easy. the fact that he's the coolest champion for me in and out of the octagon, yeah, he just seems like a nice guy and stuff. The only guy I've ever seen him not really get along with is Paul Craig when they had that little scuffle leading up to their fight. But apart from that, yeah, Jamar Hilf, he's got to be one of the coolest champions right now. Middleweight, Sean Strickland. This is interesting. The, f the thing that I like about Strickland is the fact that he, of all people, became champion. Out of everyone to face Adesanya, and I know that Alex Pereira beat Adesanya before, but Adesanya got his get back and plus. It wasn't Alex Pereira dominated Adesanya for five rounds like Strickland was. No one else has done this to Adesanya. Robert Whittaker was close to winning. Vittori just didn't win. Cannonier couldn't win. Yoel Romero couldn't win. There's been so many fighters at the top level that just couldn't beat Adesanya. And the one fighter of all people to dominate him, in the middleweight division at least, because I guess you can also say Jan Blachowicz did, but the one person in the middleweight division to dominate Adesanya was Sean Strickland of all people. And the fact that I say Sean Strickland is because he just gives off the fact, like the vibes that he just doesn't care. He looks and sounds like he doesn't care anything. I feel like he's the most out of place champion ever. Like if you told me a year ago from now, Sean Strickland would be a champion. 
you'd, I'd, I'd say you're off your mind. He, he just looks out, even just holding the belt, he looks out of place. And that's not to be disrespectful. I want him to con continue being the champ, and I'm so glad that he managed to beat Adesanya. He's probably the most accepted champion ever as well. Like, I can't find anyone who doesn't really like the fact that Strickland beat Adesanya besides diehard Adesanya fans. But, yeah, he just looks out of place. And, yeah, he was the one to dominate Izzy. Like, the, the fact that he beat him, like, pretty much all of the fight, maybe he lost one round, and he dropped him as well. Sean Strickland, of all people. And the fact, the, the funny thing is as well, he wasn't even supposed to get a title shot. He was supposed to be Adesanya versus Drikas. Drikas obviously couldn't fight. I think they offered Cannoneer a shot, or they offered somebody else a shot. I forgot who it was. And they turned it down, so the final result was Strickland. It's still crazy to me. It's still crazy to me how Sean Strickland's champion, but I like the fact that he, of all people, became champion. The one guy the UFC want to keep away from the mic as much as possible, not because he's bad at promoting, but just the things that he says, has now become the champion. I, I, I kind of like that about him. Leon Edwards, it's got to be the head kick. It's got to be the head kick knockout. I mean, that's kind of what he's built his entire career on. Leon Edwards has kind of been disrespected before the head kick knockout. He was always just seen as another contender that's going to lose to Kamaru Usman. I mean, he literally got he literally got booed in the UK when he was fighting Gunnar Nelson. I know he had some beef with Darren Till, but still. Um, he's always been kind of disrespected. People called him boring. And even in that fight with Kamaru Usman, he was losing the fight. And the fact that out of nowhere, it's kind of like a Rocky story as well. As well. He pulled out the head kick knockout out of nowhere. And that's kind of... He, he's become so much more famous after that. Like, Leon Edwards, you know, he's been he's main evented in the UK. His entire career is one of the most famous stars in the UFC right now. At least top 20 anyway. And that's simply just because of the head kick knockout. It was one of the best knockouts in the UFC. And it wasn't just a good knockout. It was the fact it was against Kamaru Usman. He was about to break Anderson Silva's record. He was dominating every welterweight. The UFC claimed him as better than GSP. And they still do for some reason. Um, at least in the welterweight division, and he was only he was the only guy not only to take Usman down in the UFC if you're not counting Colby's, only guy to knock out Usman, and only guy to beat Usman in the UFC, and that and all because of the head kick knockout and all, well maybe not the takedowns and stuff, but yeah the, the fact that he ended Usman's reign, you've just got to give Leon Edwards respect that head kick knockout it has built his career. The pro, I, I don't want to see him go on about headshot dead for the next 10 fights and watch all of them be like decisions and everything. Like, if you're going to get a decision win, don't start talking to your opponent saying headshot dead. If you're going to go for the head kick, fair play. You can you, you know, you can keep calling about headshot dead. But I don't want to hear that phrase over and over again. But Leon Edwards, the best thing about him for me is the head kick knockout. You could also go with his physique. Lightweight, Islam Makachev, the fact that he's so skilled. He is probably, for me, the most well-rounded fighter in the UFC. He just knocked out Alexander Volkanovsky. You can make excuses. You can say that he was on short notice. You can say that it was in an unnatural weight class, but he still did it. Volkanovsky is one of the best strikers in the UFC. People were calling Volkanovsky the best striker in the UFC, and maybe he still is. I'm not trying to take away from Volkanovsky. Maybe he still is, but the fact that Islam Makachev, a wrestler, Another Dagestani wrestler was able to knock out, not only just outstrike, but knock out Volkanovski was insane. I'd say he's an S-tier wrestler. He's one of the best wrestlers in the UFC. It's between him, a few others, maybe Bo Nickel. And I'd say he's an A-tier striker. Not S-tier just yet, because although he did manage to KO Volkanovski, I would like to see him use his striking a bit more against other lightweight contenders like maybe Yagechi. But he's pretty much nearly perfect. He's nearly a perfect fighter. I can't really think of one flaw about Islam Makachev when it comes to the octagon. I genuinely can't really think of anything to critique him on, and that's just because he's insanely skilled. Like, even at John Jones, we can say that, oh, his boxing's not that great, he doesn't have that much power. Islam, I genuinely struggle to think of anything that he kind of lacks, um, and he beats pretty much every lightweight, in my opinion. I, I, I reckon he goes out there, beats Armin again, Gaethje, um, Oliveira, Darius. I think he beats all of them. And I, I reckon he could have a good shot at going for the 170 belt. So for Islam, he is, for me, the most well-rounded fighter in the UFC right now. And he is just he's insanely skilled. I can't think of anyone that's going to beat him. And then we go to his former rival, Alexander Volkanovsky at featherweight. I'm going to include two things because both of them are kind of little, but... I like the fact that he dominates, and I, I know I've said dominates a few times in this video, but he genuinely like batters every featherweight, and he also has the balls to go to lightweight. When we look at the featherweight division, notice how, look at everyone's face after they face Volkanovski. Islam's face, I know that's okay, well look at the featherweight division. 
Ilya Tup not Ilya Tupora, Yaya Rodriguez, Battered Face, Korean Zombie, Max Holloway, Brian Ortega, everyone that faces Volkanovski leaves with so many bruises on their face, and that's because he's just one of the most dominant champions at featherweight, and even in the first fight with Islam Makachev, he was able to break his face a lot as well. That's what I like about Volkanovski. He just break. He doesn't just scrape decision wins like some of the foot of the champions did, like Adesanya. He goes out there and he absolutely smokes every, pretty much every featherweight there is. Well, that's fought him at least. That's what I like about Volkanovski. The fact that he can break people's faces. No featherweight belongs in there with him. Maybe Ilya. I, I want to see him versus Ilya Taporia because obviously he got knocked out. Maybe his maybe his mental state and confidence is broken a little bit. Maybe he's getting worse and worse and worse. But still, I want to see them with, with see him in there with Taporia. But I like the fact that he just smokes all these featherweight contenders. And you've got to give him props. He fought Islam on 12 days notice. There's a new meme going around where it's like. If there's like something that's pulled out or something that can't happen, they've got Volkanovski to be the replacement. And that's just because he's got balls, man. He's got the balls to go to lightweight and you've got to give him respect for that. So Volkanovski, top two featherweights of all time. Then we go O'Malley. Doesn't matter what you think about him. You've got to admit, O'Malley's rarely in boring fights. You can say that you think he's arrogant. You can say that you don't like him. You can say that you just want him to get beaten by some other contender. A lot of people want Cheeto to beat him. But you've got to give respects to O'Malley. He's rarely ever in boring fights. I'd much rather have O'Malley as a champion than Aljo. And that's not because I dislike Aljo. I just think he's much funner than Aljo. I mean, Aljo's style is kind of just... I mean, he got a decision win against Henry Cejudo that wasn't that interesting. He got a decision win against Yan that wasn't that interesting. He got a win over TJ Dillashaw, but it was an injured Dillashaw. I just feel like Aljo's not that interesting as a champion, and neither is people like Marab. As dominant as Marab is, I'd always pick O'Malley to be champion, and that's not because, you know, his personality, but his fight style. He's got such an entertaining fight style. Seven knockouts in the UFC. I mean, he just knocked out Aljo. I can't wait to see O'Malley fight, genuinely, because he's never in a boring fight. It's almost as if you could put the most boring fighter in there, like a Bilal Mohamed of the bantamweight division, and O'Malley would still find a way to make the fight interesting, and that's why... That's, that's one thing about I like about O'Malley. He's ne never in a boring fight. You can hate him, you can love him, but you're going to tune in because you know that it's going to be a bang on whatever he fights. And finally, flyweight, Pantoja. He makes every fight a war. Even when he's losing against Figueredo, Pantoja always finds a way to make the fight a war. And that's what I like about Pantoja. Instantly, off the get-go, and I knew this was going to happen in the Moreno Rima, uh, trilogy, he, he noticed whenever Pantoja fights... Off the get-go, he's always just swinging. Always comes to fight, and that's what I respect about him. And the fact that he's, he's a great grappler and he hits so hard, there's nearly there's pretty much blood in every single one of his fights. Um, if, he's not, if he doesn't manage to finish you, he'll make it an absolute scrap. I mean, that fight he had with Moreno at UFC 290 was one of the best fights in flyweight history. Arguably was the best fight in flyweight history. You've got to give respect to Pantoja for that. He starts swinging from the get-go. No matter who you are, how good you are, he's going to make the fight a scrap. And like I said with O'Malley, he's never really in boring fights, is Pantoja. He's quite kind of underrated. I don't really hear anyone talking about him. I don't know if that's because of him or just because the flyweight division isn't, isn't as popular. But Pantoja, you need to start tuning in because all of his fights are fun and he always makes every fight a scrap. But yeah... Those, that's one thing I like about every UFC champion. Let me know what you like about every UFC champion. I will do a part two with like the things I don't like. But yeah, that's just my first list. And yeah, thank you for watching.